we've been talking about voltage dividers and Wheatstone bridges uh, as ways that we can measure um, things like strain and temperature. Now we're going to kind of dig into what's involved in measuring strain. Um, and the first thing we have to do is figure out what exactly uh, strain is. <laughs> and so strain is about deformation. Okay, so when we apply a load to uh, any kind of material, uh, some kind of force, um, it'll deform. Um, and you know, you can imagine if I try to squeeze a, a bar together, right? That's a terrible example. <laughs> if I try to squeeze some material together with my superhuman strength, even if I don't have superhuman strength, which is hard to imagine, um, that's going to change that material, right? Maybe not a lot, but it's going to push the molecules of that material closer together. And particularly when we're talking about a solid or a metal that has a, a structure to it, we're going to kind of collapse that structure a little bit. We're going to make those molecules go closer to each other uh, than they really want to be. Uh, and that is what strain is. Uh, it's the, the change in uh, the the material in the length of the material compared to its original length. So if originally my bar was 10 centimeters long and with my superhuman strength, I pushed it together and made it 9.5 centimeters long, my strain would be that 0.5 centimeter change over the 10 centimeters. Okay. And you can see that that's a dimensionless uh, number, right? Because we've got a length over a length. So really it's a percentage change. And you can even think about that on the molecular level, right? Those molecules um, are getting, you know, say 5% closer to each other than they were before. That defines what the strain is, um, that percentage change in, in their distance. And so if we look at, and here's a, you know, example from the, the lab that we'll do, uh, if we bend a beam here, um, if I measured the length of this bottom line and the length of that top line, we'd find that they were different than they originally were. This top one is getting longer, uh, and we call that tensile strain. The bottom surface is actually getting shorter, and we call that compressive strain. Okay, So even as this beam is vibrating back and forth, the surface molecules are being pulled apart, pushed together, pulled apart, pushed together. And that strain, that change, that deformation uh, compared to the original uh, distance uh, or length of that uh, object. Now, uh, a solid material uh, that experiences some strain is also experiencing stress. And stress is not dimensionless. It's an internal, it's like pressure in a fluid. Uh, it's if I'm pushing those molecules closer together than they want to be, uh, they're going to be trying to push back. And so we can think of stress as a, an, an internal force that's created by the fact that the material is under strain. When we define stress, uh, we define it particularly if the if the strains are relatively small. If I'm not really you know permanently deforming, say a metal. Um, then that relationship between strain and stress is a linear one. This, the modulus of elasticity, is a material component. In other words, it's defined for steel or for aluminum, and it's going to be constant uh, for the most part. Um, and so whatever my strain is, we multiply by that constant and we get a stress. So up here is a stress-strain diagram, which is a common way of uh, expressing how a material uh, reacts to uh, strain, you can see in this section, this is what we call the, um, the linear section or the elastic section of the stress-strain diagram, when our strains are small, um, we have a nice linear relationship and it tells me what my stresses are over here. Okay. And stress is in units of pressure. So just like Pressure in a fluid is about, I've pushed those molecules closer together and they want to push back. This is the same thing. We're just taking a material, a solid material, pushing those molecules together or pulling them apart 
uh, and they're trying to return to that equilibrium position. And so it's that internal force uh, that exists per unit area, right? So that's um, it's it's a, a sort of fractional part, like the the amount of force has to do with how much material there is in there.